It's, it's a, beautiful a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, we have leaves all in our yeah. face. Did you hit Mr. Rogers with him? I he don't know. Right Did here I? on this bench with us. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Hey, Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. We're in the hometown of Mr. Rogers, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. We're going to check out his childhood home. We're going to check out his church. We're going to check out his school. We got a lot to show you. And we are so excited. So excited. We cordially invite you to come along for the adventure. Come along. Fred Rogers was born in this house right here on March 20th, 1928. That's right, at that time it was owned by his grandparents, Fred B. and Nancy McFeely. You might know the name McFeely, Mr. McFeely from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Of course he used the last name of his grandparents for that name. There it is, right there, the home he was actually born in. Mr. Rogers' grandfather used to tell him, I like you just the way you are. Rogers used that line often in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood to teach kids how important each one of them was. We've now made our way on over to Mr. Rogers' childhood home. It's not too hard to imagine him playing in this yard right here with some puppets and having fun. Yeah, this is where he actually started creating this idea of the land of make-believe. As a child, he had asthma, so he was home quite often and out of school. He also was overweight and he had some shyness and issues at school. As a matter of fact, people at school used to call him Fat Freddy during those years, which is strange because when he got older, he only weighed 143 pounds. He always said the one stood for I, the four stood for love, and the three stood for you. I love you, one, four, three, the letters and all of those words. He was very particular about staying at that weight in his older years. He said, they said that he would weigh himself every single day. He got up very early in the morning. He was very much strict on himself and with his scheduling. He would go to bed around 9.30 at night, wake up around 4.30 to 5.30 in the morning. He would always pray, read his Bible first thing in the morning and prepare for the day. And of course he would weigh himself every day and he tried to come in at 1.43. But anyway, as a child, he was a bit overweight and he struggled with that. That left him sitting in his room and also being shy on top of that. So he loved spending time in his room with his puppets in the land of make-believe. He had make-believe friends in there and he created this whole world right inside of this house right here. And then he used his story to inspire others and other children to help them go through the same things that he went through. That's right. He used that. That created a great deal of empathy inside of him for other people who were struggling with the same things. Now another Interesting fact is that he also helped out adults. This was not very well known. He definitely didn't publicize this, but a lot of adults came out later on after he had passed away and talked about how he had helped them out of addictions, out of loneliness, out of depression, all different things. He actually saved some people's lives by helping them out as they were struggling in their life. Mr. Rogers' mom knitted by hand all of the famous sweaters he used on his show until her death in 1981. About 10 years after her death, the sweaters were starting to show their age. So it was time to find a replacement, but that was easier said than done. The art department of the show searched around and many companies dropped off sweaters for them to check out, but none of them worked just right. Finally, a staff member saw a US Postal Service worker walking down the road wearing a sweater that looked similar to the one Mr. Rogers wore. She asked for a look at the label on the sweater and contacted the company that made them. The show ended up buying a bunch of white sweaters from the company and dyed them different colors for the show. We now made our way on over to this school right here, which used to be a high school. And guess what? Mr. Rogers went here and so did a professional golfer. That's right, this used to be called Latrobe High School. It's now an elementary school. Mr. Rogers graduated here in 1946. One year later in 1947, Arnold Palmer, the guy who won the Masters Tournament in Augusta four times, I believe, he graduated from this school in 1947. That means for three years, Mr. Rogers and Mr. Palmer both were attending this school right here. How cool is that? Now, this is the place where Mr. Rogers began to come out of his shell. Of course, he was very shy, overweight, and all that stuff in his younger years, but he began to get out of that when he got here. He became president of the Student Council. He was also a member of the National Honor Society, and he was editor-in-chief of the school yearbook. 
Mr. Rogers ended up being inducted into the Television Hall of Fame in 1999 and received a Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2002. We drove about 30 minutes away from La Trobe to this area right here. This is where his grandfather had a cabin, a vacation home. And it's so cool because it was right next to the falls over here. Yeah, beautiful waterfall. I think it's about 45 feet high. They used to have a swimming hole of some sort. It might be that area there behind us. Matter of fact, there are a lot of remains in this area from when they used to be here. Right here behind us might be where the cottage or the little house used to be. Mr. Rogers loved to come here. Of course, this was kind of his private area. He could go enjoy the falls. He told the story many years later, back in the 1990s, that he would climb all the way down to the falls. Now, back then, there weren't any steps to get you down there. He just kind of climbed down and got down to the behind the falls area and he could just sit there and think. Of course, he had that rough childhood we told you about earlier. At one point he said, I used to cry to myself when I was alone and I would cry through my fingers and make up songs on the piano. Of course, he went and majored in music in college. He wrote all the songs that were used on the show. He also wrote hundreds of other songs. So this was kind of his private place or sometimes he probably felt a little bad, a little sorry for himself. We all know that feeling from our childhood as well. There are times you just feel a little down, but he just felt God's beauty out here in nature at his grandfather's cabin. This is called Buttermilk Falls and is considered one of the most beautiful waterfalls in Western Pennsylvania. But there has been a drought lately, so there isn't much water flowing down the falls today. We have now made our way on over to this really cool little park. It was named after Mr. Rogers' father, which is James Hillis Rogers. James Hillis Rogers Memorial Park. The park is given in memory of James Hillis Rogers by his family and friends. Now, here is also where the city has given us some special highlight to Mr. Rogers himself, Fred McFeely Rogers. They have put up a historical marker right over here that we're walking up to right now. They put this up back in 2016. Here we go. Here we go. Born and raised in Latrobe, Mr. Rogers was the creator, composer, host, and puppeteer of the award-winning TV program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The program produced at WQED in Pittsburgh emphasized kindness, compassion, and learning. An ordained minister, Fred Rogers received the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his outstanding approach to children's media and his legacy of nurturing and inspiring generations of children. Also in this park is that really cool bench that we were sitting on earlier. That's what we'll find right over here. Here on the ground in front of Mr. Rogers is the neighborhood trolley. The creator of the statue was very precise in his creation of it. He found out what size shoes and clothing Mr. Rogers wore before creating the statue. The city of Latrobe definitely keeps the memories of Mr. Rogers alive. Yeah, you got the city of Latrobe City Hall over there, and you might not be able to see it too well, but there's a trolley up there. We can see it better right here. On all these street signs, there's a trolley. The trolley that takes you to the land of make-believe. Of course, King Friday the 13th and all of his crew that we all got to know a little bit as children. Over across the street, we see Mr. Rogers up there. And then right down the way where the Latrobe Art Center is housed, the building is housed in, is called the Rogers Building, right over there. We are now standing where Second Lord School used to be, which was the school that Mr. Rogers went to. It stood here between 1882 and 2014. That's right, it was a high school. It was the first ever high school in the area, but it also housed elementary school classes. So this is where Mr. Rogers attended elementary school. Matter of fact, the entranceway is right where the Heather is right here that is what the entranceway was to the front door of the school and over here they have the sign that hung above the entrance of the school for 130 years so there's the spot we just showed you what's really cool is just right over here is the latrobe presbyterian church that he used to go to this is where he went to all the years he was living here with his parents also golfer arnold palmer was a member of this church as well at one point. Now, Mr. Rogers, of course, kept that Presbyterian faith all through his life. He actually became an ordained Presbyterian minister in 1963. The interesting thing about that is he actually had plans to become a minister, but he decided he actually was watching TV and he said, man, 
these shows are garbage. They're not teaching kids anything. They're not healthy for the children. We can do so much more with that median. He felt like he could have a ministry in television. He started doing some puppets in TV and went on, of course, to do Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. But he kept that ordination up through the Presbyterian Church. He would go back and meet with the elders every time he had to renew it and became and stayed an ordained minister all throughout his entire rest of his life. Such an awesome man. He always felt his ministry instead of being a preacher was ministering to the children in their families who watched his TV show. Mr. Rogers retired in 2001 and sadly he was diagnosed with stomach cancer in 2002. That was in December of 2002. He passed away unfortunately on February 27th of 2003. But I think we can all make a pretty good guess as to where he went when he passed away. We're gonna have a story at his grave then head over there, show you the grave, tell you more about it, and we hope you'll check that out. We'll put it in the link below. For now, y'all be sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and ring the notification bells, and come along with us on future adventures. Come along.